Grace and peace, my fellow believers in Christ. This is your brother Felix Copio. I am coming from Kenya. Right now, we want to get into the text, the pure written word of truth, the very voice of God, which is active, authoritative, and without error. I'm speaking about the King James Bible uh, in English. It is the is the only place that we find God uh, communicating with us. Having said this, my fellow believers in Christ, let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for everything that you've done to us in Christ Jesus, uh, including all the spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We are grateful for the uh, for the indwelling of the Holy Ghost and the forgiveness of sins that uh, you give to us uh, the moment uh, we believe in and trusted in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for our soul salvation. We are forevermore your children. This is my humble prayer. In Jesus' name I pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Welcome, my fellow believers in Christ. Uh, this is your uh, brother in Christ, Felix Copio, and uh, we are here to edify the saints and also to see souls saved. My title, uh, my topic today is about the two prophetic, uh, the two programs uh, of God in the entire Word of Truth, that is the King James Bible. So we have got two programs in the Bible that we need to understand. So these two program, one of the program is called uh, prophetic program, and the other one is called the mystery program. So before I go into any details, let us see something here about the gospel that saves today. Amen. What is the gospel of the grace of God? The gospel of the grace of God is the message given to the apostle Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles in the dispensation of the grace of God. It, it was kept secret until revealed by the risen Lord glorified Jesus Christ. So this gospel is the gospel that God is using today to save mankind. Those people who believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for their soul salvation. Right. So the basic details of this gospel include salvation apart from Israel. Salvation apart from the law of Moses. Salvation apart from works of any kind. Uh, water baptism is not a part of the message of grace. Uh, justification is based uh, in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection. So once you believe this gospel of the grace of God, uh, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are immediately uh, saved. Your salvation is immediately free and secured. So the reference to this is uh, 1 Corinthians First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 17 and Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9. Then we have Romans chapter 11 and we have Romans chapter 4 verse 5. Then we have Romans chapter, th uh, chapter 3 and finally we have Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 to 14. Amen. That is the detail about the gospel that saves us today under grace dispensation period where the Bible is complete. Having said that, my fellow believers in Christ, so we want to look at uh, the prophetic program and the mystery program as the only two programs uh, that God is using to reclaim both the heavens and the earth. Amen. Remember, the earth is defiled and also the heaven is defiled. So the only place that is not defined is the uh, the third heaven, where the uh, that is the third heaven where we find the throne of God, right? So, dear friend, what we need to understand is that uh, these are great questions about what is the prophetic program and what is the mystery program. Firstly, we need we we begin by understanding that the God of the Bible does not operate randomly. Or carelessly, he behaves according to uh, according to great thought and careful planning. Therefore, his dealings with mankind can be organized into two programs. A program is defined as a say, uh, as a planned series of future events, whether concerning the prophetic program or the mystery program. God has a prearranged body of information. To be believed and action to be taken 
So let us look at uh, the biblical basis for these terms, the prophetic program and the mystery program. Amen? Right. So the prophetic program is outlined and sketched in Acts chapter 3, verse 19 to 21. Allow me to read from the King James Bible. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing uh, shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which, had, which God had spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So we are talking about the prophetic program. So repent and be water baptized. That is in line with the prophetic program. Amen. So when we look at verse 20, 21, verse 21 says, God spoke some truth since the world began. When he placed Adam on the earth, we see that he used prophets or spokesmen to manifest that information to mankind. Therefore, we call this the prophetic program. Uh, so that is the prophetic program, something that was spoken by the holy prophets of God since the world began. Okay, now let us look at the mystery program in definition. Romans chapter 16, verse 25 to 26 says, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandments of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of, the, uh, of faith. So in contrast to God speaking information since the world began, he also withheld some information that is called the mystery. This body of truth was kept secret since the world began. God did not make it known until he first revealed it to the Apostle Paul. This shows us that Apostle Paul has a unique apostleship, a special place in God's dealing with man. Notice how the Holy, uh, Holy Spirit led Paul to write my gospel in verse 25. God entrusted to, uh, uh, to Paul's special gospel message some good news that no man prior ever knew anything about. Before we get into the specific of the mystery program or the specific of the, of the prophetic program, we want to understand why two programs are necessary. We have, we have got the, prof, uh, the prophecy and the mystery. Why are this program necessary in God's dealing with mankind? The purpose of the two programs some curious mind is, about, uh, is bound to ask why there are two programs. Could not God have managed to accomplish his purpose in creating by using one single program? Indeed, God is God, so he could have done anything he wanted. However, according to the uh, Bible, he created the universe with a dual nature. Since there is a twofold creation, there is a twofold way of dealing with that creation and a twofold purpose in that creation. In other words, creation is naturally divided into two spheres with a program corresponding to each realm. That is quite easy. We have the heavens and we have the earth. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 declares, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. There is a program for the heavenly places and another program for the earth. That's why they were created like that. We have heaven. There's a program for the heaven, heavenly places, and there's also a program for the earthly, uh, for the earth. Amen? It is absolutely imperative that we keep these two programs separate. Therefore, we read in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, if we do not divide the things that God divides, there is no proper 
in all the world to come. Uh, there is no prayer in all the world to help us. Amen. Let's you think that right division really does not matter. You just remember that all the tens of thousands of contradicting Christian denominations could have spared themselves much confusion and embarrassment as they greatly divide the word of truth. Amen. So these two program, these two program, my fellow believers in Christ, the very verse in the Bible clearly demonstrate that Almighty God deals with creation on the basis of two realms. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Notice how the Holy Spirit was very specific in the wording. Rather than say God created the universe, the scripture says God created the heaven and the earth. The twofold division in God's word is already apparent. The very first verse of the Bible introduces us to right division, dispensational Bible study, making divisions in God's word that he himself has made in it. Amen? So, to achieve this purpose, God has one program agenda for the heaven and another completely different program for the earth. Both programs function in their respective, uh, respective realm to accomplish his overall goal, to make the Jesus Christ head of all of the government in heaven and on, the, uh, on earth, that they all serve him, but this program must be rightly divided if they are to, be, uh, to make sense. The goal of dispensational Bible studies to ensure the Bible's clarity, that is not be confused as Satan desire. To combine the two Bible programs is to confuse heaven and earth, and it is to introduce an answerable confusion. That explains the doctrinal uh, disorder in Christendom today. So we need to study to show ourselves approval to God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right? So let us, get, let us uh, go to the prophecy. What is prophecy in the scripture? Prophecy, the program that God uses to magnify his son in the earth is called the prophetic program. Amen? For it contains information, doctrine that was prophesied or spoken about since he placed man, Adam, on, the, on, on earth. Notice what the apostle Peter Preaches, Jesus Christ, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So from the beginning of creation, God revealed to mankind a plan to have Jesus Christ reign on the earth. This information is found in the Bible books of Genesis through Malachi, Matthew through John, Acts chapter 1 to 8, and Hebrews through Revelation. The agency, group of believers whom God will use to magnify his son forever in the earth is the nation Israel. That is Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 and 6. Okay. We find that law is the operative system for the prophetic program. The Apostle Peter and the 11 Apostles of Israel are the divinely ordained human leaders in the prophetic program. Now to mystery program. The program that God used to magnify his son in the heavens is called the mystery program. For it contains information, doctrine that was kept secret or not spoken about since he placed man, that is Adam, on earth. Notice what the Apostle Paul wrote. Now to him, God, the Father, that is of power to establish you according to my gospel 
at the sick uh, at the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began but now is made manifest Romans chapter 16 verse 25 to 26 so from the beginning of creation God kept a plan to have Jesus Christ reign in the heavenly places. This information is found in the Bible books known as Paul's epistles, right? Romans through Philemon. The agency or group of believers whom God will use to magnify his son forever in the heavens is the church, the body of Christ. That is Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 and Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 to 7. Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. Amen? Grace is the operating system for the ministry program. The Apostle Paul is the divinely ordained human leader in ministry program. The Apostle Paul is the divinely ordained human leader in the ministry program. And if you can find time, Please read Romans chapter 11, verse 13. Allow me to read from uh, King James Bible. Romans chapter 11, verse 13. That will tell you that the Apostle Paul is the divinely ordained human leader for, uh, in the mystery program of God. Allow me to read Romans chapter 11, verse 13. For I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch I am the apostle of the Gentiles. I magnified my office. Remember, the Apostle Paul is not the Gentile, is not the Apostle to the little flock or the Israel. He is the Apostle of the Gentiles, the Apostle to the, uh, to the church, which is the body of Christ. Amen. And also, you can find that in Romans chapter 15, verse 16, and Galatians chapter 2, verse 7 and 9. Amen. So, let us go into the prophetic program. Amen. The prophetic program in brief. My fellow believers in Christ. Uh, there are seven basic facts about the prophetic program. Right? One, it focuses on God's purpose and plan for the earth. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Allow me to read from the King James Bible. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. The basics, facts about prophetic program. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Okay. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Allow me to read from the King James. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. We say that the prophetic program focuses on God's purpose and plan for the earth. Amen? Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. We find that God, since the world began, God focused, God was focused on the plan for the earth. Remember when the Lucifer rebelled against God. Right? He defiled the second heaven and the earth. So God made a purpose to reclaim the earth back to himself. Amen? And that, prophet, that program is called prophetic program. Praise the Lord. And in that prophetic program, my fellow believers in Christ, allow me to read what the mind of God is according to that program. Right? So, this is the summary of the prophet of, the, of God's plan for Israel. You can read that summary in Psalms chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. Okay? For the Jew in the Old Testament, God's plan was clear in its basic concept. What was understood was the following. So if you ask a Jew who was, uh, who was righteous based 
uh, uh, in that program, this is the mind of the Jew. What they think, what they have, what they what they read from the scripture, what was revealed by God. One, in their mind, they understood the Messiah will come. That is Jesus Christ. Number two, the Messiah will suffer. That is uh, 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 Isaiah chapter 50, uh, 50, 53. Number three, God will pour out his wrath upon the earth and judge the nation. Uh, judge the nation, the entire earth, and be. Uh, number four, God will establish his kingdom. This kingdom will cover the entire earth and be centered in Jerusalem with the, Messian, uh, with the messianic reign as king. God will fulfill all his promises to Israel during this kingdom period. Israel will be a pre, uh, preeminent among all nations of the world. Gentiles, nations who look to Israel for guidance about God and be blessed by Israel. No plan of God bless, be, uh, uh, blessings of Gentiles apart from Israel existed, i.e. the body of Christ. That is the simple plan of the prophetic program. So at your own time, please read that this plan was focuses on, on, the, on the earth. Uh, Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 to 6. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 21. And Joshua chapter 3, verse 11. We also find Job chapter 19, verse 25 to 27. And Habakkuk, Chapter 2, verse 14. You will find that God's prophetic program was focused entirely on the earth. Number two, about prophetic program. God has spoken its details since the world began. Since he created and placed Adam, man, on the earth. Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. Allow me to read. Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. Okay. Matthew 25, verse 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, bless, bless of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the earth, of the world, rather. Amen. So we find that this the prophetic program, God has spoken its detail since the world began. Other scriptural evidences we find Luke chapter 7, chapter 1, verse 70, and also Acts chapter 3, verse 19, 21. Number three about the prophetic program. There is a distinction between Jews and Gentiles. The nation Israel and, okay, sorry. There is a distinction between Jews and Israel and Gentiles. The nation Israel and the Gentiles nations are two separate peoples. Exodus chapter 19 verse 5 to 6. Amen. And also Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11 to 12. You find this distinction. Number 4. It involves soul salvation and blessings from God flowing through the nation Israel to all nations and Gentiles. That is Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. Amen. And Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 3. Number five, about prophetic program. The 12 apostles led by Peter are to preach to and instruct the nation Israel to prepare to accept and trust her Messiah King, Christ Jesus, that is Matthew, Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 10, verse 1 to 7. Sorry, allow me to read Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, from verse 1 to 11, to, to 7. So we say this, my fellow believers in Christ, that uh, the 12 apostles, remember, Paul is not included here. You will not find Paul preaching the kingdom, 
gospel to the body of Christ. So the 12 apostles led by Peter are to preach to and instruct the nation Israel to prepare to accept and trust her Messiah King, Christ Jesus. Amen? Let us read Matthew chapter 10, verse 1 to 7. And when, the, and when he had called unto him his disciple, Jesus, uh, his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirit to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. The first Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas, and, and Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Lebdas, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanites, and Judas Iscariot, also, who also betrayed him. These twelve, Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Remember, we are not to preach this gospel that Christ is sending, is giving out to the twelve apostles. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. So that message, that kingdom prophetic program message, that repent and ye shall and be baptized and receive the Holy Ghost. That is not message to the Gentiles. Amen. God, Jesus is saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Sumerian. Enter he not. But go rather to the lordship of the house of Israel. There is the gospel of the kingdom that was through the lordship of the house of Israel. That gospel is not to the Gentiles. Amen. That's why we don't do water baptism. That's why we don't cast out devils. That's why we don't we don't clean, we don't cleanse the lepers. Amen. And as he go preach, saying, The kingdom of God is at hand. Heal the sick. So they were told to preach that the kingdom of God is as, as is at hand. Remember what God is doing today. The kingdom of God is not at hand. The kingdom of God has been postponed. Until the rapture time. So we don't preach the kingdom of God. Which is at hand. Right? So he was. they were told. Heal the sick. We don't heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. And so, and so on and so forth. So what I wanted to make it clear here. Is this. My fellow believers in Christ. Uh, okay. Right? It is here. So what we need to understand is this one. The 12 led by Peter are to preach to and instruct the nation Israel to prepare to accept and trust her Messiah, uh, King, Christ Jesus. This is the gospel of the kingdom. And various miraculous demonstrations validate that message. That's why those people could heal the sick. They could cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. And cast out devils. Amen. And they were told. Freely ye have received. Freely give. So. Why were they given. The manifestations of the demonstration. Of miraculous powers. To validate. That message. Amen. That message of the gospel of the kingdom is at hand. Allow me to read from Matthew. Chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4 verse uh, 23. Okay, Matthew 4, 23. Matthew 4, 23. Okay, Matthew 4, 23 is here. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues. Remember the synagogues are for the Jews. And preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sicknesses. And all manner of diseases among the people. So they were given the, uh, the demonstrations of the miraculous powers. To validate, to validate that message. Okay, Matthew chapter 9 verse 35 as well. Let us read that. To see why they were gifted. They were bestowed upon with miraculous, miraculous powers. Uh, Matthew chapter 9 verse 35. 
And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sicknesses and every diseases among the people. Amen? Right. So, that is the gospel of the kingdom. Uh, uh, various miraculous demonstrations validate that message. Another thing, water baptism is an integral part of this gospel message. That is Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Matthew 28, verse 19. So whoever is telling you to dip your, uh, yourself into water, that man is not preaching the right division of the word of truth. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. 19. Okay, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Right. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So we find that uh, baptism is an integral part of this gospel message. Of the gospel of the kingdom. Amen. So redeem Israel. Is to then take that message. To all the nations of the world. This worldwide. Evangelism campaign will be in the millennium. When Jesus Christ. Reigns over the earth. For a thousand years. That is Psalms chapter 2. Verse 6 and 8. Prior to that kingdom. Uh, prior to that millennium. There is a period of wrath known as the seven-year tribulation. You can find that in Matthew chapter 24 and Luke chapter 21. For example, as well as much of the book of Revelation. The second coming of Jesus Christ concludes the seven years and opens the, new, uh, the millennium reign. That is Revelation chapter 19 from 11 to 21. Point number six about the, uh, about the prophetic message, prophetic program. The operating system is the law. Whether the Mosaic law, you can find that in Exodus chapter 10, 20 and Deuteronomy chapter 5. Or the Messianic law. See Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 5 through 7. Since Israel is the literal, physical, visible, earthly people of God. They have literal physical, visible, earthly works as necessary part of their conduct. Lastly, about the prophetic program. The book that includes here, the books of the Genesis through John, as well as early Acts, and Hebrews through Revelation. Those are the books that if you want to deal, uh, if you want to learn more about kingdom prophetic program, you go to those books. Now let us turn to mystery program before I end this preaching. The mystery program in brief. So, <clears throat> there are also seven facts about the mystery program. One, it focuses on God's purpose and plan for the heavenly places. Acts chapter 9 verse 3. Acts chapter 22 verse 6. Acts chapter 26 verse 13. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1 to 2. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Amen? It focuses on God's purpose and plan for the heavenly places. Number two. God has not spoken its detail since the world began. He revealed it first to the apostle Paul. With Paul being sent to tell that one secret information to all nations, Gentiles. That is Romans chapter 16. Verse 25 to 26. Amen. And Ephesians chapter 3 verse 1 to 10. The, this body of truth is called the dispensation of the grace of God. Number three. There is no distinction between Jews and Gentiles. Romans chapter 3 verse 22. Galatians chapter 3 verse 26 to 28. Let me read Galatians. Galatians 
chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 to 28. There is no distinction between Jews and Gentiles under grace dispensation period. Okay. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. So whoever wants to be a child of God, my fellow believers in Christ. Right? If you want to be a child of God, remember, those who are not God's children are not saved. They are still in Adam. Okay? And they do not have the spirit of God. So how do we become God's children under the dispensation of the grace of God? Paul is going to tell us, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. He here is the body of Christ. All members of the body of Christ are God's children by faith in, by faith in Jesus Christ. So we are God's children by faith in Christ Jesus. We are not God's children by prayer. We are not made God to be God's children by fasting and engaging into religious rituals, ordinances, ceremonies, and, 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 uh, and, uh, and rituals. Amen? So we are God's children by faith. Faith in who? Faith in Jesus Christ. So if you want to be a child of God, amen, it is not by prayer. It is not by fasting. It is not by being a good person. But it is by trusting in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And forevermore, you will be a child of God. And remember, all children of God, under the dispensation of the grace of God, have been adopted into the family of God. They have got the spirit of God. They have got total forgiveness of their sins, past, present, and future. They are called sons of God. Amen? And... They are going to be raptured out of this world uh, the, uh, uh, before, the, before the beginning of the Jacob's trouble. Amen? So we need to understand. That is how we became children of God by having faith in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen? So when, when we believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we became God's children by the spirit of adoption for as many of you as have been baptized into christ are put on christ we don't put on christ through prayer we don't put on christ through engaging in mystical uh, kind of behavior or ascetic life amen we put on we put on christ when we trusted in his death burial and resurrection and we became God's children and now we were uh, we were being baptized into Christ remember this is waterless baptism but water baptism is not involved when you are made a member of the body of Christ you are made a member to the body of Christ by believing in the death burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ for your soul salvation we were baptized into Christ amen there is neither Jew nor Gentile, uh, nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ. And if ye be Christ, amen, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Praise the Lord. Right, my fellow believers in Christ. That is how we became God's children. So, uh, okay, we find this, that there is no distinction between Jews and Gentiles. Amen? All believers in Jesus Christ are parts of the one body, the church, the body of Christ. That is 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 12, verse, uh, verse 12 to 13. And Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 12, verse 22. Allow me to read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 to 23. Okay? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 to 23. Okay. 
and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Praise the Lord. We find that those outside of the body of Christ are lost because you are in Christ. You are not lost. Because you are in Christ, you have total forgiveness of sins. Because you are in Christ, you are saved. Only those people who are in Christ are saved. Remember, today we have got two people. There are those in Christ and there are those outside of Christ. Those people who are outside Christ, they are lost. They are unsaved. They are hell bound. They are heading to hell. If they don't believe and trust the Holy Gospel that saves people today, that is the gospel preached by Apostle Paul, revealed to him by our recent glorified Lord Jesus. If these people who are outside Christ do not trust and believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for their soul salvation, they are hell bound, they are unsaved, they are lost and going to hell. Amen. Number four, it involves soul salvation and blessing from God flowing to all nations. Gentiles through Israel's fall and during a temporary spiritual blindness, Israel's program has not been cancelled, only delayed, paused, and postponed. We have, to re we have not replaced Israel. So to validate Paul's gospel to unsaved Israel, Various special miraculous demonstrations were temporarily given in Paul's ministry. That is Acts chapter 19, verse 11 and 12. And we find that 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. And 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23. Water baptism is not important in Paul's ministry. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. And Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5. The Acts transitional period is not for our doctrine. Amen? Point number five. The Apostle Paul is to preach to and instruct all nations that simple faith in Jesus Christ dying for their sins, his burial, and his resurrection as the means of having eternal life before God. So how, do we, how did we receive eternal life before God. Did we receive it by prayer? No, far from that thought. Did we receive it by fasting? No, far from that thought. How did we receive the eternal life that we, are, we have already today? I have the eternal life. Amen? Do you know why? I believed in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Immediately you believe that gospel. You will not have money. You will not have wealth. You will not have material possession. But what you will have that is promised to you is eternal life. Man, my problem is not about prosperity. It's not how to prosper in this world. My problem was how can I receive an eternal life? Man, I receive it when I believe the gospel that Paul preaches. If you believe the gospel that Paul is preaching today, in Romans through Philemon, how Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scripture, for your soul salvation, you will have immediate, secured, eternal life. You cannot lose the eternal life. Amen? So we have to preach and instruct all nations that simple faith, it is not prayer. It is not engaging or attending religious rituals, ordinances, and and. Uh, and, and ceremonies. How to receive eternal life is very simple. Trusting in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for your salvation, you receive eternal life before God. So remember, Israel's rejected Messiah is now the Savior of the world. Acts chapter nine, Acts chapter thirteen, verse forty-six to forty-eight. First Timothy chapter four, verse nine. And 10. So, 
This is the gospel of the grace of God. Acts chapter 20 verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 1 to 4. It is what Paul go, uh, it is what Paul called my gospel in Romans chapter 16 verse 25. Thank you very much. The operating system is grace. Neither the Mosaic law nor the Messianic law. Since we, the church, the body of Christ, are not the literal, physical, visible, earthly people of God, we have no literal, physical, visible, earthly works as necessary part of our conduct. Lastly, my fellow believers in Christ, the books that will tell you about the mystery program, the dispensation of the grace of God, is Romans through Philemon. The 13 epistle of Apostle Paul. We call them 13 Pauline epistle. Amen. My fellow believers in Christ. In your Bible. As I finish this. In your Bible. There are two programs. Amen. Two programs. One. Prophecy. Second. Mystery. In your Bible. There are two realms. So. All righteous people will live, will, will spend eternity in the two realms. First of all, the messianic kingdom will for the righteous people under kingdom prophetic program. Then the heavenly places for, uh, for the body of Christ. These two program, these two realms serve one eternal purpose. In eternity future, Father God wants to glorify his son, Jesus Christ, in heaven and on earth. As per the eternal purpose which God purposed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 11. All governments of heaven and earth will be brought under the headship of the Lord Jesus Christ. What Satan has polluted, my fellow believers in Christ. Remember, Satan polluted the second heaven and the earth. The only place that Satan did not pollute is the third heaven where there is the throne of God. Because he was, uh, he was thro uh, thrown out of that place. What Satan has polluted with sin, that is Job chapter 15 verse 15. And Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. God will cleanse in the ages to come. Praise the Lord. So, we read in Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 to 20. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, which is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the, uh, through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I said, whether they be things in heart or things in heaven. My fellow believers in Christ, maybe you are watching me and you are confused about the Bible. For the Bible to make, uh, to be clear and simple, and to sound that it doesn't have contradiction. Please, welcome to Made Acts Pauline Dispensational Bible Study. We teach the Bible rightly divided. We need to understand what is not ours and what is not uh, what is ours. Amen? For those people who are not saved, salvation is simple. By grace through faith alone, you are saved in, 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 in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for your soul salvation. You are saved seal until the day of redemption thank you very much my fellow believers in christ for all watching please i find your time uh, to actually check on my facebook page for more details about the preaching of jesus christ according to the revelation of the mystery i do also distribute king james bible copy so if you have a copy of the king james bible please find in our your heart to actually donate it to us so that we can uh, uh, give it to other people God bless you all. Love you all. Until next time, grace and peace. Thank you.